everyone. I am here to discuss about the separation of powers here in the Philippines. The concept of the separation of powers is a fundamental principle of democratic governance and it is reflected in the Constitution of the Philippines. The Constitution divides the powers of government into three distinct departments. And these are the legislative department, which is responsible for making laws, the executive department, which is responsible for enforcing the law, and the judicial department, which is responsible for interpreting the laws. We will now discuss the different departments, starting with the legislative department. Hello, we are here at the Sangguni Apang Monsoon of General Santos City, the legislative counterpart of the local government unit of General Santos City, and here we will discuss the legislative branch in relation to the separation of power. The Constitution vested the legislative power to the Congress, which the Congress constitutes the House of Representatives and the Senate. This is stated in Section 1, Article 6 of the 1987 Constitution. Legislative power, in its definition, is the power to enact laws. The executive is the power to execute laws, while judiciary is the power to interpret the law. According to the doctrine of separation of power, the Congress has exclusive cognizance of matter within its jurisdiction and is supreme within its own sphere. The following powers as stipulated in the Constitution aside from legislative function are as follow. First, the Congress can initiate an inquiry in aid of legislation. Second, it has an oversight function. Third, it has the power to declare a state of war with two-thirds of the vote from the Congress. Fourth, we have the power to appropriate budgets which will be given by the President to the Congress in order to be passed. Fifth, we have the power of taxation. The said powers is stipulated in Article 21, 22, 23, 24, and Article 28 respectively. Further, in Section 3, Article 11 of the 1987 Constitution, the Congress has the power to initiate impeachment cases that can serve as a quasi-judicial body. The Congress must not abuse its discretion that will amount to excess or lack of jurisdiction. This will create a balance between the three different branches of the government in order to avoid abuses. So that's it for my discussion of the Legislative Department in relation to the separation of power. So we have here a case on point which would illustrate how separation of power works. In this case, we have Corpus versus People, GR number 180016, decided on April 29, 2014. In this case, we could see we would see how the court um, limits it limit its role in the government. Here, there was a certain Joey Trebiani who was found guilty of Istapa when it was um, appealed and eventually uh, eventually reached, reached to the Supreme Court. The justices have this discussion in, in trying to remedy the penalties provided by the revised penal code. They argued that the said penalty is not in the right context because the value of such money provided in the RPC is not in equal in value as to its present time. Um, some justices proposed that the penalty should be in the basis of ratio of 1 peso to 100 pesos. They resolved this case by stating that their role only is to interpret the law. So basically, they are trying to avoid judicial legislation which would violate the very principle of the doctrine of separation of power and that they shall only apply what was what was the law stated and should not preempt the role of the legislative power so here we can see the dynamics that even though their arguments um is sound in general the court's argument is sound it's not their role in our government it was not given by the constitution it was vested by the constitution to our legislative branch of the government which is the congress so that's for the corpus versus people kid i hope you learned something 
the legislative branch in relation to the separation of power and as such I'll give it to my other groupmates thank you Hello everyone, I'm at the local executive department of the local government unit of General Santa City. We will discuss the executive department in relation to the doctrine of separation of power existing in our government system. Section 1, Article 7 of the 1987 Constitution states that the executive power shall be vested in the President of the Philippines. The President is the head of state and all of the government and they have the power too. One is the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces. Two, veto or sign legislation into law. Three, call a special sessions of Congress. Four, grant pardons and reprieves and among the others. The Constitution also outlines the powers of the various departments and its responsibilities within the executive branch and are responsible for implementing and enforcing the laws in policies of the government. Political questions are based on the idea that there are certain issues that are so closely tied to the functioning of the political branches of government. Example, the executive department that the court should not interfere with a resolution. This issue are often considered to be non-justiciable, meaning that they are not suitable for judicial determination. Now let's discuss the case of Beralgo versus the Philippine Truth Commission, GR number 192935, December 7, 2010. Now, the facts of this case is that prior to May 2010 election, Inigo Simeon Aquino declared war against graft and corruption. Now by this, he won the presidential race of 2010. Now, to carry out the war against graft and corruption, he created the Philippine Truth Commission by Executive Order Number 1. Now, the Philippine Truth Commission is a fact-finding body, an ad hoc body, under the office of the President. And its primary task is to investigate reports of graft and corruption committed by the third-level public officers, employees, and agents of the previous administration. Now, it is vested with the investigative bodies under the administrative code, but it is not a quasi-judicial body. Now, the issue of this case is that is the executive order number one creating the Philippine Truth Commission constitutional? Now, the Supreme Court and Bank have the executive order number one as constitutional however it is worthy to note the separate opinion of justice lucas t bersonin he stated that the president has no power to create a public office it is not shared by congress with the president until and unless Congress enacts legislation that delegates a part of the power to the president or any other officer or agency. It is a set of rule that the president's power of control can only mean the power of an officer to alter, modify, set aside what a subordinate officer had done in the performance of his duties and to substitute the judgment of the former for that of the latter. As such, the creation by the president of a public office like the Truth Commission without either a provision of the Constitution or a proper law enacted by Congress authorizing such creation is not an act that the power of control includes. Hello everyone, we are here at the Regional Trial Court of General Santos City, a part of our Judicial Department which we will discuss in relation to the doctrine of separation of power existing in our government system. 
the judicial power shall be vested in the Supreme Court and in such lower courts as may be established by the law as provided in Section 1, Article 8 of the 1987 Constitution. Generally, the judicial branch is responsible for interpreting the laws and resolving disputes with the Supreme Court in the highest court in the land and it's responsible for interpreting the Constitution, reviewing decisions made by the lower courts. Further, as stipulated in Section 1, Article 8 of the 1987 Constitution, judicial power includes the duty of the courts of justice to settle actual controversies involving rights which are legally demandable and enforceable, and to determine whether or not there has been a grave abuse of discretion amounting to lack or excess of jurisdiction on the part of any branch or instrumentality of the government. In contrast, the political question which the court would not entertain matters that needs to be decided by the people in their sovereign capacity. The judicial department entertains justiciable question. Justiciable questions are typically matters of law or fact that are capable of being resolved through the application of legal principles and precedent. Good day everyone. Today we're going to discuss the case of Silverio versus Republic. The facts of this case is that before the RTC of Manila, Silverio filed a petition to change his name and from Romel Asento to Meli in his sex, from male to female in his birth certificate for the reason of sex reassignment. He alleged that he is a male but thinks like a female. The RTC ruled in his favor for it is consonance with the principles of justice and equality. The Republic, through the OSG, filed a petition for certiorari in the Court of Appeals, alleging that there is no law allowing the change of name by reason of sex alteration. Petitioner filed a reconsideration but it was denied. Now, the issue of this case is that can the Supreme Court uphold the ruling on RTC? It was held that the court cannot uphold the ruling on the RTC. The court states that it might be theoretically possible for this court to write protocol on when a person may be recognized as having successfully changed his sex. However, this court has no authority to fashion a law on that matter or anything else. The court cannot enact a law where there is no law exists. It can only apply or interpret the written word of its co-equal branch of the government, that is the Congress. Here, the court was asked to allow the change of name and sex of the petitioner without existing laws as basis thereto. Affirming the petition would violate the doctrine of separations of powers. The power to enact law was vested on the Congress. Hence, the case would reject the prayer of the petitioner. So, in summary, the separation of powers is a fundamental principle of the Philippine law that divides the power of the government into three distinct departments. And these are again, the Legislative Department, the Executive Department, and the Judicial Department. This system is designed to prevent abuse of power and protect the rights of individuals and promote efficiency and accountability. Thank you for listening and have a good day.